Let's find the area and perimeter of some strangely shaped figures. Uh, these are polygons, but uh, we, there are no specialized formulas for polygons that look anything like these. So let's talk about some strategies on how we can do things like finding the area and the perimeter. Um, so if you have something that looks like this, well I guess the perimeter is easy enough. Uh, you know, the perimeter is just going to be add up all the side lengths. If we start here and work our way around, it's going to be 9 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 10. Alright, whatever that gives us not terribly important that's just going to be some number all right uh, the important thing here though is to find the area um, or at least the better information the, the area is the amount of space on the inside and if I was to cut this piece up let's say if I was to cut it along here actually it doesn't really matter where I cut it if I was to cut it along here and say the area of this piece and add it to the area of this piece it would give me the area of the total thing so what I'd like to do is cut this and this up in such a way that I have some pieces, uh, the pieces that I recognize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this line along here, and I'm going to cut this piece off. Well, this gives me a little rectangle right here, and this rectangle, it looks like this side is 4 centimeters. You know, that's because it says 4 centimeters right there, so that distance right there is 4. This distance right here is 6. And we have a little rectangle. Um, now, when we cut off the 4 centimeters here, this used to be 7 centimeters, so that means there's 3 centimeters left over. So instead of it being 7 centimeters, it's now 4 on this part and 3 over there. That's just 7 minus 4 is 3. That's where I got that number. All right, now let's look at the remaining part. After I cut this little rectangle off, you'll notice what I'm left with is a trapezoid. So, let's see. The area for the trapezoid is something else I can find, and fortunately enough for me, well, this distance right here... That's one big long line, except it's made up of a six inch section or six centimeter section and a three centimeter section. That means that this distance here, let me write it over here just because there's too much going on over there. This must be nine centimeters total. Six plus uh, six plus three is nine centimeters. That's my the height of this particular trapezoid. So that means the area of this total thing would be the area of the rectangle. The um, what was that? Four by six. This is the area of the rectangle plus the area of the trapezoid. The trapezoid has an area of one half times the sum of the two bases. We have a nine inch, ba a nine centimeter base down there and a three centimeter base up there, so nine plus three, times the height, which is this, uh, this nine here. Okay, let's actually plug this stuff into the calculator and see what we get. We get four times six plus 0.5 times 12 times nine which gives me a total of 78. And this is all in centimeters, so the area will be in square centimeters. I could also do 9 plus 3, 4, 6, 7, and 10. Add all those together, that would give me a total perimeter of 39 centimeters. Notice the, um, I do want to point out that the area, the perimeter of this rectangle and the perimeter of the trapezoid basically have nothing to do with the perimeter of the overall figure, because this section right here, this six centimeter section that, uh, where I, that I kind of made up, where I cut off, that's just made up. That's not part of the, um, that's not part of the perimeter of the, the overall figure. I have, uh, it looks like uh, all, all these appear to be 90 degree angles, and so if I was to cut this, um, I don't know, there's a, several different places I could cut this. Um, if I was to cut it here, for instance, um, I would end up with a rectangle and a rectangle. Or I could cut it here, and I'd end up with a rectangle over here and a rectangle over here. Or I could cut it in both those places and end up with three rectangles. Um, I'm not really seeing anything that's better than any other method. Um, I could also cut it, could add on something here and say it's the bigger rectangle minus the smaller one. So you have lots of options with, with some of these figures. Um, the thing that comes that looks most natural to me would be to cut off this little bit. And of course I don't have um, I don't have this distance here. I'm gonna have to figure that out. So to figure out that distance, well I know this distance, this distance right here is 27.2 and this distance right here is 18.7. And the combination of those, uh, or sorry, this one plus this unknown distance, this one up here, would must be equal to this 27.2. So that means I could just say this distance right here, I'll call it x for the moment, 
Um, if x plus 18.7 is equal to 27.2, then that means x is equal to 27.2 minus 18.7. Uh, that's something I can ask the calculator. 27.2 minus 18.7, which gives me 8.5. So that means th this distance right here is 8.5. That's the height of that particular rectangle. So I have the height and the width of that rectangle. I have um, of this big rectangle, I would call this um, those are the two dimensions of that rectangle, so it looks like I have enough to find the area here. The area is going to be the area of this little rectangle up here, 8.1 times 8.5, plus the area of this big, big rectangle, which I'm doing 18.7 times 25.2. You'll notice this 27.2 was not a dimension of either of these rectangles. That's why it doesn't appear in this formula at all. Um, let's go ahead and do that. 88.1 times 8.5 plus 18.7 times 25.2. We get 540.09. These were all in meters, so this will be in square meters. For the perimeter, um, well, I need to know all the side lengths, and it looks like I don't know this side length yet, this, this one right here. So I can do a similar sort of thing to find that side length. Um, I know that this distance plus this distance, if I was to move that up, it looks like this. The sum of those must be this 25.2. So I get 8.1 plus y equals 25.2, thus y must be 25.2 minus 8.1. Which is 17.1. And now I actually have enough information to find the total perimeter. It'll just be the sum of all these side lengths. So 27.2 plus 25.2, I'm doing this one plus this one and just working my way around, plus 18.7 plus 17.1 plus 8.5 plus 8.1. When you're figuring out the area, or the perimeter rather, I do recommend going in a, um, just kind of rotating your way around, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. Um, that way you're less likely to miss a side. If you, if you, I've had some people kind of go through here and do this number plus that number plus that number plus that number and trying to do it that way, but inevitably, uh, you know, I've seen people try to add things together and they just miss one of the signs. And it's really, it's a lot easier to do if you're not going taking them in order. So in any case, uh, the total length here is 104.8. And the units here would be in meters. This is a perimeter, so it's a distance, so it's just meters.